Alex, you are on mute. Ah, there we are. Thank you, Ramon. Um, so I'll start again. Welcome, everyone. Um, happy Friday. Um, welcome to the second AMA in our series. Um, today, it's my pleasure to have um, Asif and, from Polygon and Ramon um, from Aragon um, to talk through... Alex, you are on mute. Hmm? Ah, there we are. Thank you, Ramon. Um, so... Um, so um, we have we have Asif and we have Ramon um, who are going to be answering community questions. I know we've got lots already, so we'll we'll work to get through them. Um, obviously, we we have um, we've had sort of the exciting development of Aragon going multi-chain, um, and obviously, I'm really looking forward to seeing some great questions throughout. And hopefully, by the end, you'll know all about um, Polygon. Why, why we chose Polygon initially um, as our first uh, multi-chain deployment um, and the opportunities that it opens up for Aragon communities around the world. Um, first, for those of you who don't know, Polygon's a protocol and a framework um, for building and connecting Ethereum-compatible blockchain networks, um, aggregating scalable solutions on Ethereum, supporting a multi-chain Ethereum ecosystem. And why are we discussing it in the context of Aragon? Um, well, very excitingly, Aragon Client has now been deployed on Polygon. Um, so without further ado, I welcome up Ramon and um, Asif onto the stage. So we'll have Ramon on camera. Asif is, Asif is here, but not on camera. Um, but we will um, start working through the questions. But first off, I will give um, Asif the opportunity to maybe introduce himself um, and introduce Polygon a bit more in detail, and then Ramon will do the same with you. Yeah, sure. Hey, hey, Alex. Hey, Ramon. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me here, uh, and thanks to the community as well for joining. Uh, just a small quick intro uh, about myself. So I'm Asif, and I particularly lead Polygon DeFi growth efforts. Uh, so that would majorly be uh, in contributing to the DeFi growth in terms of maybe protocol deployments uh, or TVL increase or increased usage awareness around that. Uh, about Polygon for the people aware. Backlist. So Polygon is a suite of Ethereum scaling solutions. Uh, so we feel that Scaling doesn't have a one-size-fits-all uh, thesis, and we feel that Ethereum needs different scaling solutions in order to scale, in order to serve different uh, functions. Uh, so one of our scaling solution is a proof-of-stake chain, which is EVM compatible. It is running currently. It has around 5 billion in TVL uh, and seeing around 200K users per day uh, and around 5 million Brilliant. Fantastic. Thanks, Asif. And Ramon, um, a quick intro from you. Obviously, hopefully most people know you already. Um, yeah. I think we've, we've, we've lost you briefly, Asif, but well, uh, Ramon, do you want to intro yourself? Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Ramon. I'm leading product here at Aragon. Uh, for, for those who know me, I'm also Hamon. So for anyone, this is my name. Uh, and really happy to be here to talk about this multi-chain environment and this awesome partnership that we have with Polygon. So yeah, excited to answer some questions today. Brilliant. And Ramon, I'll probably, I'll start with you. Um, uh, sort of the first questions that have come through um, and maybe you can just touch upon it is, is why, why, why do you see multi-chain as important for Aragon. And then maybe you can just talk a little bit about the the cost reduction that's actually occurred through the deployment on Polygon. Perfect. Uh, first, why going multi-chain? The main like mission or vision of Aragon, it's really empower uh, organizations, empower society, empower humans to organize themselves. And we don't have any, let's say, preference or 
but we are not uh, extremists saying Ethereum is the only thing. We really just want to, to give tools to people to organize themselves. So going to other chains, using cheaper solutions, uh, solutions that provide different features, uh, there is no reason for us to, to not go into this direction. So this is why we started with the, the multi-chain uh, and why Polygon and why the cost and the cost reductions. As an example, deploying a DAO, the last test that I did, deploying a DAO in Ethereum versus deploying a DAO in Polygon, it was 20,000 times cheaper. So uh, I was able to deploy a DAO with less than 10 cents in Polygon. So this kind of reduction also empowers much more people to be able to organize themselves, to coordinate themselves and to, to, to go into this world of DAOs. And this is in the end what we really want to do. And this is only the beginning. Uh, we really want to, to scale much more solutions to use much more of the 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 suit of solutions that polygon provides and yeah just provide more 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 features and bring more value for the community in general brilliant um and then asif i'll come back i'll come over to you so we'll we'll we'll, we'll ping between you both so i don't make anyone feel left out um but do you want to just just touch on how the how the project provides um scalability um for ethereum using proof of stake um and is it a is it a protocol or is it is a native blockchain itself um polygon yeah sure so it's it's a proof of stake blockchain exactly that has its own consensus mechanism so currently we have around 100 validators uh, and we do the tenderly a consensus model on this uh, so the way it works is that every every transaction that occurs on our chain uh, that is bundled into a Merkle tree and uh, we do routinely checkpoints on ethereum so that that is also something that pretty much separates us from a, a normal side chain that we routinely do these uh, transactions and then commit it to ethereum main chain Uh, yeah, that, that's that's actually one of the the next questions that we have is 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 that the only sort of differentiator between between other side chains, if that makes sense, or is the is is that the sort of main one? See, that is pretty much the main one, the primary one, uh, and of course now in terms of adoption and users and protocols, and with the network effect, now that really separates us from other side chains uh, because. Uh, we have around 180 DeFi protocols currently running, and you have nearly every DeFi primitive. So yeah, that composability and that just gives a lot of breathing space for DAOs to work upon. Also, that is one now big differentiator. Yeah, brilliant, fantastic. Um, Ramon, question question for you. Uh, now we have now we obviously have uh, Polygon, um, and you can deploy your your client client down there um question from the community is is there now going to be situations where it makes sense for aragon and aragon DAO to exist on both polygon and ethereum mainnet at the same time or is it going to be a case of selecting one or the other what's going to be the best sort of structure there uh it really depends on like each use case i i do foresee DAOs that want to interact with, with both chains and for now, there is no way to directly through a Polygon DAO, for example, interact with Ethereum or vice versa. So it makes sense to have the DAO in both platforms. We do foresee in the future easier ways to have a single DAO in a single chain that you can choose and then interact with other chains, mainly, for example, by using Polygon solutions. But for now, if you want to interact with both chains, you need to have your DAO in both chains. And well, since it's so, so cheap to create in Polygon, I would say, yeah, have 10,000 Polygon if you want. Brilliant. So just to quickly add upon that, so we have also uh, worked upon a bridging uh, called Apex Portal. So that lets developers pass any arbitrary messages to Ethereum from Polygon to and fro. So that essentially would mean that uh, DAOs can cross communicate and that is also something that I think Aragon should definitely look into. And that would essentially solve this problem of DAO on L1 or Polygon, 
because of this arbitrary message passing. Brilliant, absolutely. Um, and uh, uh, adoption now, uh, but yeah, I think uh, things can get really interesting. Absolutely. Well, that's definitely something we we will we will be looking at now. Um, and uh, see, do you want to just touch on how how Polygon is is solving issues with with centralization? Sure, sure. Uh, so the way we look at centralization problem would be first, of course, the network security problem. So that would be directly related to our validator set. Second would be, of course, the operations on the business side, firm side. So for validator side, we are not bring an option mechanism that uh, let on board more developers at the same time, keeping the same efficiency that we have. So that wouldn't increase uh, the transaction times or the check pointing times, those kind of things. Second thing here would also be that Lido staking, Lido liquid staking is also building on Polygon. So that would mean that people can come with their Matic, valid stake their Matic, get ST Matic. So this would also lead to higher decentralization. From, from a operations point of view, we are also creating a Polygon DAO uh, that would serve to to basically solve the business side of things, the adoption side of things, the awareness side of things, and just aimed at getting getting more people into the blockchain space. So yeah, that that would be two main things. That's that, that's very exciting to hear. You're you're building a DAO. Do you want to go into a tiny bit more? More obviously, uh, we are we are the DAO's biggest fans. So do you want to go into a little bit more detail there on what the plans are there, timelines, um, what what's it going to look like? What's the sort of structure going to be? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I would start by stating the reason why we think the DAO would be really important for us, uh, if you may. Uh, so when we started this journey to scale Ethereum, uh, the efforts from our side were pretty centralized, as in the, there was essentially a two-people DeFi team uh, which set aside uh, to scale Ethereum DeFi, but moving forward, uh, we feel that our efforts also need to be more decentralized and more people need to contribute to the space because currently we are sitting at around 200k users per day, which in the grand scheme of things uh, seems really low because we feel that uh, this is a 100 million user base market with the use cases we have uh, and to scale things up to that level i feel that dao would be extremely uh, instrumental here upon the exact implementations and executions i would say that we are trying to figure things out as to how how will we go about uh, incentivizing the participants uh, making sure that people are contributing uh, and creating a sustainable dao uh, we have an active forum as well, where people do put out their ideas. So would appreciate if community can jump in there uh, and we share routine updates there. But yeah, that is something pretty much in the works right now. And But if you ask me about timelines, I would say one month uh, is somewhere we would have some concrete uh, models. Uh, Alexander, that, yeah, that's really exciting. Really looking forward to um to seeing to seeing that launching or at least seeing the plans. And yeah, um, I'm sure lots of the community, especially the Aragon community, will be excited to see that as well. Um, Ramon, do you want to just talk a little bit about? Obviously, we've deployed on client. Do you want to talk a little bit about um what's coming next through the other Aragon products? If that makes sense, um, when when potentially they'll be deployed, um. Sure. Uh, as you know, I hate to talk about dates, uh, but that being said, we are we are now working to deploy voice on Polygon as well. Uh, undergoing work, just finishing up some some bugs or issues as usual, 
And then we are also started to think about how do we bring Argon Govern and Argon Core to Polygon as well. This, this is not going to be as fast as we wanted because there, there is a lot more complications for Govern and for Core, but we do foresee, uh, we do expect to be able to do this during Q4. So before the end of the year, we should have Govern and Core on Polygon as well. And then we will go back to work on client uh, to support more chains because, as I mentioned, in the end, we really want to empower more people to give Web3 tools and decentralization to more communities out there. Fantastic. Brilliant. And then there are there are a few questions on will it what what are the what other sort of what other chains are are in the pipeline? Um, and will will we eventually do do cross chain um, voting systems like Polkadot and Cosmos? Perfect. Uh, we ran uh, Aragon Voice proposal to get the community involved into which next chains they would like to see client. The winner was Binance Smart Chain. So this is the first one we are going to work next. And then we have the second, third, fourth, and fifth place that I don't remember uh, by heart right now, but they are there. You can see in the voice proposal if anyone is interested. Uh, yeah, so we should start working on those. Multi cross-chain proposals, cross-chain voting, also something that we really want to enable. Not sure when are we going to be able to do that, but if this is absolutely uh, on our minds because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, especially as we mentioned in the beginning and as it mentioned, having a DAO in Polygon, for example, and using the Polygon solutions, you can do this, this bridge, uh, this message bridge, interact with other chains. So this means that your token could be available in many chains and you want, of course, all of your holders to be able to participate in processes, in, in governance proposals. So yeah, we want to do that, uh, but not specifically sure about the timeline yet. That's fine. Don't worry, Ramon. I know now I never push you for dates, but it's just like to know, we just like to know what's, what's in the pipeline, if that makes absolutely, sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, see, a, a question around um, what what makes Polygon so secure and also so scalable? Um, and maybe you can touch on that. So, so this is about the Polygon POS chain. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think one major thing would of course be the number of validators uh, that currently we have. We would say that the chain is sufficiently decentralized, if not the most centralized, uh, if not the most decentralized version of itself. Uh, and of course, if, if you we always talk in DeFi about the Lindy effect. Uh, so our chain has been live since around now 15 months, something like that, or 12 months. Uh, and till then, it has uh, seen no hiccups so far, uh, whether it's, it's uh, something like with some of the other chains. Unfortunately, it did happen uh, a couple of days earlier. So we fortunately, any such hiccups? So based on that, uh, I would say that it's sufficiently decentralized and secure. Uh, but yeah, if, if you have any other questions about uh, consensus mechanisms, those kind of things, I can share the docs as well uh, for that. And, and you can look through uh, the community. Thank you very much. Um, Ramon, I'll come back to, come back to you. A question, a question around ANT, um, and is there the possibility of bringing ANT to the to the Matic network? And if so, where will we go first? I'll answer answer that. We probably won't, we won't, we won't discuss um, exchanges, but maybe you can touch on if there's a possibility of um, ANT getting launched on, on Matic as well. Yeah, also uh, uh, in the pipeline, we are figuring out some some internal uh, things that need to happen some internal discussions with Alex by the way <laughs> and uh, but yeah we we do want to deploy ANT in polygon to enable this bridge especially because with Argon court and Argon govern being deployed in polygon we need ANT there for the whole system to work so this is absolutely happening brilliant um, that is fantastic and then um, 
another question for for you, Ramon. Um, we 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 didn't touch on it. Is there any possibility of us going on Solana as well? Uh, well, possibilities are always there. As I mentioned, we had the the proposal on Voice. Solana was not. Uh, I think it was not included actually, but maybe this is just uh, uh, like my fault. Uh, anyway, yeah, we really want to go into as many chains as possible, as long as it's like a safe chain. Uh, it has a, a, a good community, good support. Uh, it's safe. So yeah, there, there are chances, I would say. Brilliant. Um, and then, Ramon, maybe you can also touch on now, obviously, with, with DAOs being so cheap, is it now possible to do sort of DAOs, or DAOs within DAOs, if that makes sense? Because obviously before it was very prohibitive of costings, but there's a question around can you now sort of have multiple DAOs? And actually, maybe that would be, we can also explain a little bit about um, the Aragon network charter as well, but that, I think we're going to be going down that, that road as well. Perfect. Uh, yeah, and this was going to be my example. In Argon, we we are going to this direction of having like a main DAO that is controlled by the community that has most of the funds, and then we will start spinning uh, uh, spinning off many other DAOs with specific um, responsibilities. Let's say so, and and I think like everyone should sort of work like this uh, because this is the easiest way to organize people, like give specific responsibilities, give uh, a specific amount of budget, for example, and just let that smaller amount of people, smaller group to work towards some, some goals. So yeah, and being cheap, I would say it makes a lot of sense to go into this direction. Brilliant, absolutely. And then a, a question, a question as well, um around is there any way for obviously i know we obviously have the the team working on it but is there any way for other people to get involved and in helping to deploy on other chains yeah yeah uh we we are finishing some developer documentation let's call sort of teaching how to do this deployment so the community can participate and can help us deploy in in, in other chains we really want to uh Control is not the best word, but we want to have good visibility uh, of the deployments because in the end, we want to have the single system that supports many chains that it, it's really usable. So we just want to, to keep really connected to everyone that are doing, that, that is doing, sorry, the those deployments. But pretty soon we are going to share these, these instructions, let's call with the community and would love to have some, some help from everyone. Excellent, absolutely. Um, and uh, Asif, a question around. Obviously, you had a you had a bigger bigger big announcement recently with 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 Hermes and how that sort of changes how that changes Polygon or what what the sort of plan is there. That's definitely. So, I think the fundamental idea behind the Hermes announcement and the acquisition, uh, if you may say, uh, was that we we believe fundamentally that zk would be the way to scale Ethereum and that acquisition pretty much aligns uh, in that view. So the main idea there would be to create a fully functional ZK EVM, uh, which which we are confident uh, that probably around 2022 uh, Q1, Q1 end, we would be able to release a testnet uh, again uh, I guess timelines for these these high technology products wouldn't be the best to give a exact timeline. But yeah, the idea pretty much is to create a ZK EVM, uh, and that is one big game changer. I mean, hands strong. Do, do you wanna do you wanna quickly explain what a what a what what ZK is? See for for everyone who doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. So the main idea of, uh, around ZK. ZK rollups and these rollups are that you can have different chains who do off chain transactions uh, from Ethereum. These chains have really high transactions per second, high throughput. So currently, Ethereum mainnet is around 15 transactions per second on, um, on an average. So these ZK chains would probably do transactions per second in thousands. So that is just massive scalability for everyone. 
and then how these these transactions are brought to ethereum main chain is there is a different type of cryptography which makes sure that any transaction that occurred off chain is true and it is reported exactly correct to the eth mainnet through something called zero knowledge proofs i uh, hope that uh, makes sense to the community no, that was brilliant thank you for the fact that it's it's very complex thank you for explaining it um and uh, another quick question for you a see a question around obviously voting uh, well not voting but doing doing um doing uh, transactions on polygon is is much cheaper but there's a question around is it also um more environmentally friendly does it sort of reduce the energy energy costs yeah i mean our current polygon pos chain uh is significantly environment friendly if you talk to some of other proof of work chains so that would be the og bitcoin chain or even current implementation of ethereum uh i exactly don't recall the numbers uh, around the environmental impact and increase uh, i can share that later obviously but but uh, it's significantly better yes brilliant fantastic um that's really good to know and ramon another another question for you we're we're we're, we're going to I'm going to wrap up soon so if anyone's got any final questions make sure to to add them in but any we haven't got to well um we'll we'll share with with this even one afterwards and maybe add them into discord um uh, but how how what well, another question around how long would it actually take for a developer once the documentation is done to add support for another chain if that makes sense uh well depends on the experience of the <laughs> the developer yeah. uh but if we if we really get this right with the documentation it's less than a week of work for the developer and then of course it's really good to test it out uh, a lot in, in test nets before we do uh, production deployment but yeah it's it's not uh, it's not rocket science basically brilliant excellent to know um and then i think that i think we i think we will we will wrap up there cuz i don't want to keep um asif and ramon any later on a on a friday um but thank you both for for joining and answering all the questions and hopefully everyone found it um very useful um so asif thank you very much for joining i know it's it's late where you are and ramon thanks for joining as well um but so i will let you both drop off uh look out for more announcements on amas that are coming up soon as well um we're going to have some coming forwards we also have the the hackathon coming out next week as an announcement so you'll be seeing lots of news about that on how to participate um and um who's taking part um that is really exciting we we all can't wait to get that sort of the ball rolling on that so look out for more news on that uh coming next week um we also have the next community call on the 6th of october um best way to be reminded obviously is to subscribe to the youtube channel so don't forget to do that um and if there's anything that we haven't covered today um or any questions you have um or concerns or anything like that you can um jump into the discord server um or the forum or telegram and uh join the discussion um you'll see the links in the description for of the youtube event so jump in there ask us any questions you have uh, we're we're very happy to help but um asif ramon thank you both very much for joining um yeah. Yeah thanks thanks Alexander for having me uh, it was pleasure talking with you people also just just a small quick advice if you may say to the community is to space right now would highly suggest that you start looking into opportunities uh, in the dao space there are a lot of opportunities for talented people right now whether it's in tech or business or artists uh, so yeah would would highly suggest that and everyone is looking right now for talented people uh, i can i can pretty much assure you <laughs> absolutely and i i'll, I'll second i'll second to see that and everyone 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 we're looking for talented talent people to join communities lots of dials but also everyone is welcome as well um from anywhere in the world and we're we're, we're happy to welcome anyone so um 
I'm sure I'm sure a thief and polygon are the same. Yeah, I, I told you guys on that. Uh, and yeah, really happy to be here as usual. Happy to to answer community questions. As Alex mentioned, if you have any further questions, feel free to drop them out uh, on anywhere. Our Discord may you something. Brilliant, fantastic. So, well, from me, um, thank you very much. Um, I hope you have a good rest of the Friday wherever you are. Um, and I look forward to welcoming you back on the next call. Um, but again, uh, Asif, thank you very much. And Ramon, thanks for joining as well. Um, and look forward to catching up soon. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Uh, thank you, everyone. Bye.